victorious. Amen. 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 He came here for us and he laid down his life for our sins. And three days later, he rose. And that's an awesome awesome
Church. We're so excited you came and joined us at one of our campuses this weekend. On behalf of Pastor Miles and his wife Christy, we'd like to welcome you and tell you a little bit about what's going on in the Green Universe. Yeah. Ethan is right around the corner, and as we know here at Green Universe Church, it's one of our highest attended weekends of the year. That's why on the weekend of March 26th and 27th, we have 11 services for you to invite your friends, your family, and your coworkers to. Your campus times may have changed, so make sure you check out GreatUnited.com or download the Grand United app. Warriors Conference is coming up June 2nd to the 4th at Waterville Valley. This is an event every year that I really look forward to. There's always great food, awesome worship, and this year there's going to be a powerful message from our speaker, Eric Dykstra. If you haven't signed up yet, now is the time to do so because we have an awesome discount going on that ends March 15th. So go to warriorsconference.com today to sign up and to save $50. In the seat bags in front of you, you'll find what we call a connection card. If you're a first time guest, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better while you get to know us better. As you fill it in, please fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with and drop it in the offering basket as it goes by. Speaking of meeting some awesome people, we have some amazing people sitting around us, so why don't we get up, take a minute, and high five somebody you don't know yet.
Father God, I would just uh, thank you again for this awesome day. Just thank you for, uh, for bringing these folks here so we can praise and worship you freely. Father, we love you. I just pray now at this time that we uh, you just speak to you, Pastor Paul, as you bring us your word. Uh, just help us to touch our hearts with the, with the message, Father. And as we receive this offering, we just pray that you bless it uh, to further your gospel here in Lowell and the surrounding community. We love you. Give all thanks and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
thank you so much for that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. with us 
and we just want to change that, God. We want to get into your word right, right here, God, and just see what breaking through or breaking down does, God. And we just want to break through, God, for you. God, we love you, and it's your awesome name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So, guys, it's really important for us to understand who we are in Christ. Pastor Miles says this said all the time. And if, you, and if you're taking notes, write this down. If you're not taking notes, write this down. Okay? Our belief determines our behavior. All right? So just like I was saying, when we look in that mirror, what you believe when you look in that mirror is how your behavior is going to be. And just know that Jesus loves you. When you look in that mirror, tell yourself that. Don't say that, no, my life is this. I can't do this. No, don't feel bad for yourself. Get into the Word of God. Amen. And, and, and watch what the, what, the, what the Word of God says. He loves you. He wants to be there for you. And it's so true, guys, when God says, look, trust in me. Because sometimes we'll sit there and, you know, a lot of us, me, me included, think that, like, oh man, like right now, everybody's criticizing me. Okay? I can sit here and think that right now. Okay? I can sit, sit there and say, no, I can't do that. I'm going to fail at that. Or, no, you know, I can't, I can't go serving kids because I need to be in service all, all the time. Or, I can't travel for the, for the worship band because I always sing in the shower. <laughs> Alright? And there's some of us who sing in the shower that shouldn't be in the worship band. <laughs> Okay? But just know this though, okay? When, when Jesus Christ is calling us and we live by his word, okay, that your actions are declaring that he is who he said he is and he can do what he said he can do. Alright? Now I can tell you one thing, that Jesus Christ said, look, I am going to be crucified, but three days later I am going to rise again. And he did, right? Amen. Right? That's a friend who I would want. Somebody who says that they can do what they said, what he said that he'll do. Because I have plenty of friends who live like 20 minutes from me, and they'll say like, hey Paul, I'm five minutes away. And they're not even their car yet. Right? How many of us have, have a friend like that? Right? All of us. Oh, I, I, I just got on the highway. Uh, now you're still in the house. You know? All right, but Jesus Christ has said what he has said, and he follows through on it every single time. Amen. All right, that is a friend that I want to get closer to. Yeah. Okay, that is a friend who will make sure that I can draw attention to him to bring glory to him. Yeah. I love my friends, but sometimes they lie. <laughs> this book right here doesn't lie. That's right. Amen. Okay, because sometimes we, we say, you know, well, let me twist this story, let me twist this story. But when we twist it, it's not true. When we open up this, this word, it's true. Every single time. And today, I'm going to show you about two men, okay, two men who could break down or break through for Jesus Christ. Okay, and that is Peter and John. <laughs> Okay, so in the books of Acts, Peter and John all right, were amazing men. They followed God for three years. Three years they, they followed him. They were with him when he was crucified, when he was buried, when he performed miracles, and they were there when he rose again. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so guys, God is who he said he is. And he said, look, trust me. Trust me. So Peter and John, you know what? I, I'm going to trust you and I know that I can perform miracles through you with the Holy Spirit in me. So in Acts 3, they, they were at a temple and they saw a guy who had been unable to walk for 40 years. 40 years. And everyone knew that this guy was a beggar and he was in the same spot for 40 years. Same spot, he, he couldn't walk. So, we're going we're to get into, into the scripture now. If these words are highlighted, bolded, or underlined, I need you to read them loud and proud of me. 
And, and let me explain to you a little bit of the why with that. Okay? Because sometimes when we read, we just skip through things. All right? And we don't really get deep into the word. Well, these were the highlighted because we want to make sure that you can remember these points so that you can sit there and when you look in the mirror and say, wow, I need to break through, not break down. Mm -hmm. Because I remember this word and that word. Okay? It's why at Granite, we get deep into some scripture, okay, part of the scripture. And then we want you to go home and get deep into the word and just keep following up on it. Mm -hmm. So if these were the bold or underlined, you're going to read them loud proudly, right? Yes. Oh boy, I hope it's going to be louder than that. <laughs> All right. Peter and John looked at him intently. And Peter said, Look at us. All right. Look at us. He, okay? The guy's like, what? All right. So now he sits there and the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting some money. Because for 40 years, if you do something every single day for 40 years, you're going to keep on doing that, okay? Until you become new. So now watch. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. So he says, in the name of sitting there for 40 years, somebody go up to him and say, get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. And he got up and walked. I'd be like, wow, I want to be on that team. That's a pretty cool team right there. All right? So, all of a sudden, they're like, yes, this is awesome. But the religious people, you would think that they would be happy because a man was, was couldn't walk for 40 years, got up and walked. Yeah. No. Do you, know what, do you know what they did? They arrested him. They arrested Peter and John for claiming the name of Jesus. So, Scripture goes on here in Acts 4, 7. All right, it says this. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, demanded, by what power or name All right, that was good, guys, but the names didn't hear it. All right? We're going to be reaching the wall. The names going to hear it. So, or, have you done this? Okay, so now, remember this, Peter and John were standing trial in front of these religious, the, the, the religious council. This council had Peter and John's life in their hands. They hated Jesus. Hated him. And everything that, he, that they did, or they stood for, was for Jesus, Peter and John. And just mentioning the name of Jesus could have got these guys killed or thrown in jail. All right? But I can tell you one thing, though. I believe in, I believe in my God. So I'm going to mention the word Jesus Christ to every single person that I know. And, 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 and watch what these guys do. Okay? Because to a degree, right? These guys were a little nervous, right? They were scared. They were a little unsure. But let me show you what breaking down could have been. This is what they could have done if they broke down. Hey, religious people, I thought you guys would be so excited about me healing somebody, but you're not. My bad. My bad. You know what? I won't do it again. I won't do it again. I won't say anything ever again like, like that. I'll keep that all, all to myself. My fault. I thought me healing somebody, you would be ecstatic about it. I'm sorry. Okay, I will keep my opinions to myself. Right? Because that's, that's what breaking down would, would, uh, would be. It's giving in. It's when one of your friends is saying how bad their life is, and instead of sharing the gospel with them, you agree with them. It's like, it's like when your friends are hurt, you just pat them on the back instead of giving them scripture and showing what Jesus Christ has done to you. Okay, so this is what these guys did. All right, but this is how you break through. <coughs> then Peter <laughs> said to them, let me Okay, so he said, whoa, 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 pay attention here. 
this is what I'm about to say. Let me clearly state this to you. Okay? He didn't say, eh, if you want to listen, listen. No, 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 no. All right? Peter went there and said, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. The man you but whom God raised from the dead. Boom. That's what you call breaking through. That is what you call breaking through right there. They didn't break down. They, they said, let me show you what my God can do. Let me show you how my God can, can heal people. And let me show you something. I know that you guys are broken. So I'm going to clearly state this to you. That the man that you crucified, who three days later he said he was going to rise again, and he did. Okay? And that, folks, all right, some of us question a lot of things, but that is history proved. He rose again. Okay? So that is just unbelievable what God did through Peter and John. Okay? And you guys can tweet this, all right? Well, maybe not in here because our service is kind of bad. But we can get out of here. All right? But God gives ordinary people extraordinary boldness. God has given every single one of you boldness. Every single person in here. That sometimes when you sit there and your friend is just crying on the phone or they're crying in front of you, don't worry about what you're scared to say. Just speak and God will speak through you. Every single time, I promise you, he will give you those words to be bold. Because guys, every single one of you in here are bold. I promise you that in your heart, you have boldness. And God is just trying to pull it out of you. Every single day, he's like, look, trust me. Trust me. Trust me in your giving. Trust me in your serving. Trust me. I'll, I will be there for you every single time. Trust me. And sometimes, guys, it's hard. But with the power of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in them, God spoke through them. And all of a sudden, okay, these guys were the extension, the expression, and the reflection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Just by speaking through, right? Those are bold steps, all right? Bold steps. And let me share a couple of bold steps that we have here. In the past two weeks, two weeks, we have had over 30 new guests here. All right? That's what we do, right? We have soft launches. We have, we have invite cards that say that Easter we're launching. Yeah. All right, so guys, today also, I'm not sure if you heard Pastor Son Cody speaking about it, but you have connection cards here. If you are a first time guest, even a second time guest, I need you to pull this card out. It's right there in front of you and fill it out for us. Why? Because you matter so much to God. And you matter so much to, to Great United Church. And we want to make sure that you stay connected with us. Okay, so, so please. All right? And I'm, I'm going to keep on talking about this card so you can pull it out. All right? But with those 30 new guests, 19 people have raised their hand and have stepped through a relationship with you. So what does that all mean? Well, let me share a little boldness with you. These people didn't come here by mistake. They came here because you were bold enough to talk about church. You were bold enough to share the gospel. You were bold enough to share your testimony. You were bold enough to invite them. And it's not going to stop just now. Because there are so many people that we know who are so close to us, but so far from God, and that we... Our heart burns for them, and we need to keep on inviting them. Because just because I, I get to look at me, yeah, but Pastor Paul, I've invited them, you know, and they just said no. Well, guess what? When you're sick of inviting somebody, they're just getting it. They are just getting it. When you're sick of sharing the gospel with them, they are just getting it. So keep on sharing that. Be bold. Be brave. Okay, so that's one way, guys, that we are being bold here. <coughs> I 
Another way that we can be, be bold, okay, because church is about the lost. We come here on Sunday for the people who need Jesus Christ in their heart. Okay, so look, in the connection card, if you come to, to Greater Lowell, this is your, on your campus, I'm going to ask you to be bold and check off, I want to volunteer. We need everybody to volunteer. Why? Because we have kids in the, uh, kids in the kids ministry who need you. We have, we have greeters who need you. We have ushers who need you. We have popular people that, that need you. And to clearly state how important it is, we have somebody sitting here right now who came today because our parking lot team was bold enough to go out and put signs all around, and they saw a sign and they came to church. Step out of your comfort zone. Let God move. Let God move. But God is not going to move. Okay, coming to church is awesome. Getting fed the Word of God is awesome. On Sunday, that's great. But what if you were only to eat on Sundays? How grumpy and angry would you be for the rest of the week, right? <laughs> it's just like reading the Word of God. If you don't get into it daily, if you don't eat daily, you are going to be hungry and angry. You're going to be like, man, I'm starving for something. And that's God saying, it's me. Read the Word of God daily and watch God step in and move in your life and help you grow your faith. Okay? The people around you right now are the people that you want to grow with. Where's, where's all my men? 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 All right. Men. That's right. Now you all get our hands up. I hope you all signed up for Warrior Conference. Yeah. yeah. And let me say that a little more to you. Okay, that is being bold. Because some of you are like, Warrior Conference, what's that? Well, it's about, we're probably going to have over seven to 800 men there. Okay, all coming together, right? Loving on, on each other. Why? Because when you have brothers in Christ and grow together, that's when you become a real man. All right, when you want to just hang out with the people that you think is fun to hang out with or they're cool to hang out with, that's not going to get you far in this world. Okay, because this world is short, but eternity is so long, and I want to grow with my brothers in Christ. Amen. Okay, and right now, guys, we have about 25 men from our low campus who have, who have signed up now. Yeah. 25. Yeah. But we need to be bold, man. Let's all get there together. Let's all grow. All right. God is calling greater low for bigger things. And this is just one step. All right. And being bold is me sitting here being able to admit that I was a sinner. All right. That I was not a godly man. You heard me say that at the beginning. All right. But man, because of Jesus Christ, because of Grand United Church, my, my relationship with my wife has gone to a whole new level. Amen. My relationship as, as a father has gone to a whole new level. Okay? Why? Because God speaks through me now. When, when I used to put, put my hand up to God, now I put up my hand up to God to, to praise Him. Alright? Listen, I have a picture on my phone that I can show everybody. All right, that who I used to be. And I'm not afraid to show it, right, honey? That's right. No, no, no. I thought I was up there. All right. All right. But that's okay. And you know what? I, I thought about putting it up there. Because I'm not afraid of it. The old me, the new me in Christ are completely different. I, I don't want the old me. I want to be cool. I, I want to have all, all the biggest things. I want to have the biggest house, the best car. All right? I, I want to be cool. For what? 80 years? Or do, I, or do I want to help reach kids in Guatemala who need, who, who need to have one dinner a day? Do I want to reach Lowell? Do I want to reach Nashua? Do I want to reach New England for Christ? That's what it's about. Has nothing to do with right now. Nothing. Money's great, but God can can provide so much more. I promise you that, guys. Be bold and watch God move. And 
you know what? You might be sitting there saying, you know what? I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Or I'm just a quiet person. God wants to turn your just up into a more than. And remember that. So when you're, when you're sitting there looking, looking in the mirror, saying, I'm just up. How about the mirror and say, man, I can do more for God today. God can be my, my leader, not the world. Because it's very easy to get sucked into the world. All right? We were at um, Winterfest. Okay? We were in there at Vicarts. And Brian uh, got a great comment from somebody when we were passing out a card. Okay? Bleep. Okay? <laughs> But, but guess what though? They still heard the message. They still heard about church. Don't be afraid. Don't go don't getting turned down because that's what God making you stronger. So you're not just a, you are more than. So listen, so here's what happened when after Peter and John told these guys, let me clearly state, okay? The members of the council were amazed. Amazed. Like, not like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right? Amazed. Amazed. When they saw the boldness. Again, God gave Peter and John boldness. Just like God gave every single one of you boldness to go out there and speak his word. Get out there and just tell everybody about Greater Lowell. And if they don't live in Greater Lowell, tell them about our other campuses. It doesn't matter, but get them to church. All right? Watch them. Watch God move through you and them. And how cool would it be to hug a friend and say, wow, we're both brothers and sisters in Christ now. It's pretty cool, right? So, the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were with no, with no special training in the scriptures. Just like a bunch of us, right? right. But God has given us all boldness. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm saying boldness a lot. <laughs> but it's true. God has given every single one of us boldness. Just like he gave Peter and John. They also recognized them as men who had... Jesus. Alright, God. That was the best line right there. Alright? And we all sound like we're sleeping. Alright? It is a little warm in here. Come on. They also recognized them as men who had... We are all called to draw attention to ourselves to bring glory to God. Amen. That's right. All right. All right. All right. I guess we'll do it, Jeff. All right. Everybody, ready? We're going to do a little dance here. We're called to bring attention to ourselves to bring glory to God. Attention to ourselves to bring glory to God. No. All right. All right. So when we stand up and step, and step out for Jesus, guys, people notice. People notice. People see something different in you. People start to see what you have. People start to see that you are spiritually bold and you are doing it for the glory of God and not for yourself. Amen. Your boldness will amaze the, the world, church. I promise you. And these seats that are empty right here are going to be filled by your boldness. Yeah. And guess what? I'm going to be honest with you. That does not mean there's always going to be sunshine and roses. No. But that's okay. Because when you come to Christ and you step out, the devil's working overtime. He's working overtime, man. He's going to keep punching you and keep punching you. Okay? But it's, it's, it's your turn to step up and say, no. I'm going to open up the Word of God. And I'm, and I'm going to get busy with the Word of God. And you know what, devil? Step away. Because I am bringing more people to Christ. That's your good Peter and John were facing prison or death. Okay? It wasn't going to be easy for them. They could have broke down, you know, and said, My fault. All right, just, just let me go and don't let me hear it again. But they had boldness. Just like God has given you that boldness. He wants, he wants you to take a bad situation. And he, and he wants you to give him glory. Because in every single person, I know some of your stories, and I can't wait to know all of your stories, but there are bad situations 
that God can turn into good situations. Amen. Every, every single one of us. Okay? Some sometimes our, our giving. Okay, we're like, oh man, I'm so financially hurt right now. I can't do it. I had a claim bankruptcy. I'm not afraid to say it. But I thought I could give it to God. And I, and I haven't missed one payment since. Okay? Why? Because God is showing me obediency. God wants to show you obediency. Give to Him first, because it's all His anyways. And watch Him give back to you. So, spending time with Him, guys, and, sur and surrounding ourselves with other be believers makes us new in Christ. Makes us show us who we are in Christ. Strengthens our, our faith. And I didn't bring it up here with me. But Pastor last week asked us to download the, the 210 things that makes us identify ourselves in Christ. If you don't have it, I believe that we have more on the back table outside. So men, you can go to register for Warrior Conference out back. And I know you will. All right. There are, two, the, I got maybe like 15 of them. That's right. Jim has it right there. All right. To ident identify ourselves in Christ. Study it, guys. You're going to be amazed at how much God loves you. All right? In the Bible, it says it so many times how much and how awesome you are when you are new in Christ. And here's one more thought to, to close up. What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. Amen. Maybe you don't pray at all. Maybe you don't believe in God. And that's okay. You're still welcome here. You're always welcome here. Okay? But I can promise you one thing. There is a God. And you keep coming and you see the love of this room. And you have and you will say, there is a God. Okay? Maybe, maybe you sit there and, and pray small prayers. Well that that means that you don't believe that God can handle big prayers. Stop praying big big prayers. And watch what God's going to do and bless it and bless you back. Okay? But when it comes to big prayers, okay, it doesn't have to always be about you. Amen. Okay? Let God give you boldness. Don't say, bless me, help me, give me strength. Let God bless you. Because God's going to bless you when you help others. When you bring others to know Him. Okay, when you, when you start giving back to him, when you start serving him, he's going to give back to you. That's biblical. That's God moving. Okay, a lot of us songs, sometimes will say, you know what, Pastor Paul, I just don't have the time. I, I can promise you that God will provide the time. We don't know when and we don't know where, but God's going to move in your life. And God's going to open up doors that you never thought could open. Okay, God opened up this door for me to be up here. Okay, I never imagined it. From my stuttering, from my non-beliefs, okay, I knew that there was a God, but I, I, I didn't have a relationship with God. <coughs> and I want to show you this after the Council of Relief, Peter and John, what Peter and John did. I'm going to show you about, about their prayers. Okay, so in Acts 4.29, they said this. And now, O oh Lord, hear their hearts, the religious people. Okay, he's praying for them. They're praying for them. And give us, your servants, great boldness. Am I boring you? I'm boring you. <laughs> Come on, ready? We're going to start over. Great. And give us, your servants, great boldness. In preaching your word. We're all servants. God is going to give you all boldness to preach his word. Okay, it doesn't have to be up here. I'm just giving you a platform to say, go out and tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what I'm here for. Boldness generally doesn't make my life easier. In fact, it usually requires more than me that I'm comfortable giving. Does that make sense, okay? Like that, when I, when I pray, I'm praying for you to have boldness, okay? That I know that God will come back and say, you know what? 
let me bless others because that is what it's about. It's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. Next week, after service, we're going to go out to this whole neighborhood and share the Word of God and let them know about Grand United Church right here. Because you all go up here, right? How many houses do you pass? We pass a lot of houses on, on the way here, right? All right, that every single one of them are going to know that Grand United Church is right here. And that David God is well Man, I'm telling you guys, like, God is just moving in my heart right, right now that I know that every single one of us is going to walk out of here bold. Amen? Amen? All right? Because, guys, God moves when we move. But sometimes there's that first step that we need. And that first step is to have a relationship with Him. That's the first step of boldness. It's not about religion. God has said that there is one way through heaven and it's through that narrow gate. It's not a Protestants here, Catholics here, okay? They're, they're not going to call everybody like at the DMV. Okay? It's one line. It's one line through Him. And that's a relationship with Him. And if you have never invited Christ into your heart, it's important for you to know that, that it wasn't enough for God to say He loves you. He went all the way to the cross for you. That He loves you. And He wants you right now to step into that relationship with Him. If you guys all, and if you guys would all close your eyes and bow, and bow your heads, if you've never stepped into that relationship with Him, well, how do I do that, Pastor Paul? Well, that's great that, that you asked. It's a simple con a conversation between you and God. It's a prayer. Praying is talking to God. He is your friend. He is your best friend. He is not a friend that is going to leave you. He is going to take you here and move forward with you from here. And forget your past. You are brand new in Christ. So guys, quietly in your heart, I want to help you with, with this prayer. Just pray something like this, softly in your hearts. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I have done many things that don't please you. I have lived my life for myself. I am sorry and I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I believe that you died on the cross for me to save me. You did what I could not do for myself. I come to you now and ask you to take control of my life. I give it to you. Help me to live every day in the way that pleases you. Now if you just pray that prayer with me, in a few moments, I'm going to ask you just, just to raise your hand. And I have some ushers in the auditorium. They're going to walk by and they're going to put a card in your hand. That is all we're going to do. And that card says, my forever changed. Because today, you just stepped into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we just want to give you this card. So if, if you just pray that prayer for me on the count of three, will you raise your hand? One, two, three. Awesome. Right there. Right there behind you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Amen. God is doing some, some, some big things right now, guys. Awesome. So, so, so excited. And well, and what we have, our uh, eyes closed, our heads bowed. You can put your hands down if you, if, if you get a card. I'm just going to continue to pray here, guys, because I'm going to ask God to give you guys every single person to give boldness. For, for when you leave here, you invite people to come to church. You share your testimony. Because he, he wants to make sure that everybody you know comes into that relationship with him. Heavenly Father, God, God, I just come to you right now, God, thankful for, the, for this service, God, thankful for what you were doing, thankful for every person in here, God, that they took time out of their day to come spend it with you. God, we love you, God. We thank you, God, for extreme boldness. And just give us that strength, God, as we get deeper into your word. God, we love you. In, in your name we pray. Amen. You guys hear me? I'm on, I'm on. Come on, let's go to Paul again. Paul's one of our young pastors, you know, and he's been uh, brought up in this church here, like I said, five years ago, so he came in, and God's done some amazing things with this guy right here and this lovely family, so, uh, uh, thank you for coming. We had a great time tonight. Yeah. Worship music was awesome. Yeah. The message was awesome. You guys met some great people in the beginning of the service. I'm glad you guys all came today. Before you guys all leave today, 
Anybody who raised their hand today can accept Christ as a personal savior. You got one of those, those little cards. Uh, before you leave the service, you know, don't rush out. Kind of stay in your seats for a little bit and then uh, kind of mosey on down here to meet my lovely wife. Woo! She loves you. you just made today. If today was your first day, again, before you leave, uh, after you've talked to her, if you raise your hand, uh, come over and see your Pastor Paul and his lovely wife, Stacy. Yay! Yeah. Um, like Paul spoke through in the service, you know, God gives us boldness uh, to, to step on and do stuff that we normally wouldn't do. Um, the church doesn't run on its own. You know, we, we need people serving. We have a great couple back, oh, they'll be back there, uh, Kim and Don Berlandi. will be up right now. Send up the service in various. We were, we're, we all say here we're we're a ten and something. We're all a ten and something. Uh, we're not all singers like Paul is, but we're all a ten and something. So uh, on the way out, do sign up to, to, to serve in any any ministry. They they can all specifics on that. They can give you more information on that. You guys have been great today. Uh, we enjoyed having you guys here. Pray you guys all come back next week, and uh, we love you. You guys have a great week.